Welcome to Upton House. One of the finest collections of paintings in the National Trust. At only 15 centimetres tall, this small panel painting is small but beautifully formed. It was painted by the artist Gerard David, um, who was working in Bruges at the time. Each and every detail is exquisitely rendered. You can see each and every feather in the angel's multicoloured wings and each and every curl of their hair. So in it, the Virgin Mary is handing Christ um, an apple, which is a symbol of his future role of redeemer of humankind. When we look at this picture, we're actually only seeing half the story. Um, as with many pictures in the Upton collection, this is one half of a two-panel painting known as a diptych. We're actually lucky enough to know where the other half of this um, diptych is, um, and it's in the Metropolitan Museum in New York. The companion panel shows Christ taking leave of his mother um, before travelling to Jerusalem and ultimately to his death. So we can see that when both images were combined, it would allow the viewer to meditate on both the beginning and the end of Christ's life. It also reminds us that when we're looking at pictures such as this one, there's always more to the story. If you're an art lover, you might assume I'm standing in front of a Rembrandt, but actually this is a painting by Jan Lievens, who was Rembrandt's best friend and with whom he shared a studio when they were both starting out in their careers. What we have here is a painting of a magus in his study. Now, a magus is a priest of the ancient mystical religion of Zoroastrianism, and we see the magus deep in his studies, annotating a text, uh, wearing rich robes in a sumptuously appointed study. Notice in particular the two candles on the desk uh, which tell us that uh, he's been studying through the night. But notice also the light of the dawn breaking through an unseen source of light across the floor. So what we're seeing is an early mystical all-nighter. This picture was painted by Peter Bruegel the Elder in the middle of the 16th century. Now when we normally think about Bruegel we think of scenes of rowdy peasants or colourful landscapes um, and indeed he had the nickname the Peasant Bruegel. This picture however is in complete contrast to that. It's painted using a t technique called grisaille, um, which is entirely in shades of grey. So of the 40 paintings that we know of that are attributed to Bruegel, there are only three pictures painted using this technique, um, which makes it a really rare and special object. The title of the picture is The Dormition of the Virgin, which means um, falling into death without suffering. It's a nighttime scene and the only sources of light are the candles and the fire that burns in the grate. The Virgin Mary holds a candle, but if we look closer, we can see there's a divine light emanating from her. After his death, one of Bruegel's friends wrote, there's always more meaning than he painted in his pictures. And what I really love about this picture is the longer you look, the longer you allow your eyes to acclimatise to the dark, the more that you see. So this charming painting of a little girl was painted in the early 17th century in Flanders. Uh, we don't know yet who painted it, although we haven't stopped trying to find out um, and we don't know who the little girl is, but we do know that she was a very special little girl because for anyone to have their portrait painted at this period was a very special privilege. We can also see she's wearing extremely expensive costume. In fact, it's identical costume to what her presumably very wealthy parents would have been wearing. The painting's painted on wood, so it's made on three wooden panels. And on the back of one of the panels is a stamp in the shape of a stylized castle. This tells us that the panels were made in Antwerp in about 1620, which gives us the most detailed information we have about this picture. So sometimes when we don't have full documentation, the material of the object itself is our best evidence for its history. 